Yep, go ahead. Okay, good morning. Welcome to Archaeology 101, and we're down in the hills at Coshocton County on a site we've been working for almost 10 years. Uh, not out in the field today, on field sites, we are on our, our ancient village site. And the best way to describe this place would be like going to IHOP or Perkins. If you get a whopping full plate of pancakes just one on top of the other, that's the way this one acre site is along the Tuscarawas River. One site after another culture after another culture piled on top of each other. And here we are, we're opening it up, uh, getting my tarps off. We'll take a panorama of the site and uh, after we get a first few buckets, we'll share with you our finds for the year. field and the woods is full of surprises and this is always a welcome delight. Uh, peeling the tarps back and it's always fun to see who our visitors are. And in this case we have a beautiful uh, black snake probably about four feet long hiding under the tarps and I can see that definitely watching us. Here's the movements trying to figure out what to do uh, and no doubt they're under the tarps looking for mice uh, or maybe toads, but beautiful snakes. This is a farmer's dream, and anybody who spends time in the forest welcomes this reptilian visitor. Well, we're going to be starting and stopping quite a bit, um, both because of the work, but also the excitement and the enthusiasm of opening up a site. Right now, uh, we're trying to reestablish our vertical walls. Uh, looking for features and uh, uh, we suspect that we have one right here. We've got uh, the zone where it's kind of a combination of plow zone habitation zone and then within that habitation zone is where we're actually looking for the features and so far on this site our features have been fire pits, garbage pits, uh, hearths, things of that nature. Uh, I think we've had two um, post mold holes and, uh, and that's pretty much it. So right now we're following our vertical wall around and up in this area, um, I just simply call it chocolate soil. It's definitely soil that people, it's been invaded by people and uh, it goes down way below the plow zone, down deeper than normal. So we suspect we have a fire pit right here. So we're gonna remove this, remove this, establish our vertical walls We'll sift and see what we got. So we'll see you in a few minutes. Uh, all right, so we've got the, the walls trimmed a little bit, and we're still trying to locate profiles and features. A profile would be pretty much a cross-section, a good look at the area, and a feature is when you're starting to hone in on where there was prehistoric activity. Now follow my short little screwdriver, and you'll see what we call the, there's different names given to this virgin sand or earth where nobody's walked before. Normally on this site it's yellow sand. So if we go clear down by the bottom, we're hitting some yellow sand at this point. But interestingly, there's charcoal that's penetrated this uh, yellow sand zone. Not only has it penetrated, but not as just black seeping, but it's actually the, the charcoal itself. So the fire pit here is going deeper. So what we have here 
is the uh, cone, the downward movement of the cone from this fire pit, going down, 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 down a little bit deeper, and starting to come up. This is the suspected area of a fire pit. So we're gonna take a look at that over at the sifters. Well, as you can see, we have quite a bit of sand, and it's mostly sand on this site. And actually, we'd almost say that anything other than sand is an exotic. It came in uh, probably from the prehistoric people. We're right on the edge of what used to be the Tuscarawas River. Uh, this is the back area. It was an oxbow cut off by the canals that went through here years ago. Kind of kept this site preserved. So we're beginning the process. We have our sifters are made from hardware cloth, and this is so much more logical than standing and doing one of these that you see most colleges doing. It just totally exhausts a person. But here, waist high, a little bit of pressure, you can push the sand right through the hardware cloth, and it does a much better job with happier people that are actually doing the sifting. And I wanna make a special note that of all the stuff that's going on here, probably the sifting is the most crucial because that's where you find the evidence, the surprises, the treasures from all your hard work. So we're going to take a few minutes, sift, and we'll bring you back and show you how things are going. We uh, have been moving through our, our buckets slow, consistently, and we stopped here because we're hitting a few things and I thought it might be fun to share some of this with you. Uh, for example, uh, this is what we call skin. Not that it's skin, but it's the outermost part of a shard of pottery. The other middle and the other side is totally missing. So this is what we call skin instead of saying uh, just a piece of a shard. We try to simplify things. So this is a outermost part of a shard. Uh, this is, we stopped when we saw this because not only is it a shard of pottery, but it's huge. This is extremely thick. And you want diagnostic material. And so we're looking at possibly a storage vessel toward the bottom of the storage vessel. Uh, might be a Dina. That's our thinking so far with this. And then we noticed that we had a piece of uh, flint ridge flint could possibly even be nethers flint ridge because of the uh, The lines of the striping that goes through the piece these we save we go over with a really good hand lens and look to see if they're micro tools Coming off the dig site and I see some more stuff in here. I want to talk about uh, right here and Right here are bits of charcoal now. We're not going to be doing any carbon 14 uh, if we were, we would use steel, scoop it up, and put it in an aluminum foil and seal it, and then we would send it off to a lab. Uh, but we're not doing that at this point. So basically, it's charcoal. It can be looked at to determine the fiber of what tree it's come from. So I'm going to just pick them up, and these will be put in a separate place in the uh, file from the dig site. And then we have just a lot of rocks. These are just firecrack sandstone rocks that have exploded into pieces and instead of saying firestone exploded rock we just call it an fcr for fire cracked rock and this is the way it is this is where all the work goes on and this is where you're actually unwrapping all your christmas presents <laughs> and it's a blast i want to mention that this is a salvage dig site uh it's not done uh, in for the most part you know a, a centimeter at a time uh, this has been severely inundated in years past. In the 1970s, it was potholed beyond imagination, including tractors, plows, front end loaders, backhoes. And we're coming in on one of the sides that we think probably was left unscathed. Nevertheless, we're still keeping our fire pits, garbage pits, and all that stuff isolated to see what we can learn and see what their stories are going to tell. So uh, we'll get back to you in a few and see what we got. Got it. See, we're back again. <laughs> so much fun, I had to come back. Uh, we're gonna stop it right now and take a look at some things that have popped up. Now this is the result of having gone through several buckets. It's not as though every bucket has something, but 
we are working on a fire pit we do expect things to come out so come on over and let me show you what we got uh, interestingly this we're gonna dig it out and take a look and see what this is but we recognize the flint it might be Flint Ridge but in Coshocton they have an outcrop of Vanport or Flint Ridge Flint so it may be Flint Ridge from this county who knows we'll dig him out but here's what's cool over here uh, we just got very excited when we saw this I'll clean him off a little bit look at it, see if you can actually see what we see <laughs> how do you like that groove running around this little guy we've got some type of a grooved either a grooved axe or a grooved hammer stone here that's been shattered in the fire pit that's cool we also have some big flakes and these may be flake knives and again we'll have to examine the edges of these here's another one laying right here we'll take a look at him I want to see what this thing is over here oh boy okay this looks like it may be a final stage preform uh, or uh, probably not paleo because there's no basal or lateral grinding on it I don't see any removal of thinning flakes off the base it looks like the movement the work is coming in from the sides uh, this just may be a woodland a late late woodland or hopo or adena final stage preform but either way look at it. it's beautiful more than likely it's vanport coming out of coshocton county so this is what we got so far and uh, unless we come up with something great we'll say goodbye for now and get back to you later thanks for joining us okay so we're finishing up our dig for this morning uh, and we will take a break and finish up later but basically I wanted to show you feature and profile profile is what you see here it's just a like a slice of cake okay so that's the uh, profile but in the profile there's a feature if you notice this real light yellow sand right here in the dark area right here and if you look real close you'll see that this dark area is like an inverted uh, cone. It comes down, 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 and then it starts back up. This is the fire pit. We're coming in laterally from one of the sides on this pit. And we're going to take a minute and just show you some of the things that have come out of this, and then we'll wrap that up for today. So, hey, thanks for joining us in Classroom Archaeology 101 along the Tuscaroras River. See you soon.